Hey, how are you? I'm Tony Moss. I'm the chef and proprietor here at Craigie on Main, Cambridge, Mass. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about oysters from our good friends down at Island Creek, uh, Duxbury, Massachusetts, with their awesome oysters. Um, there's phenomenal oysters in this world all over the place. And, you know, we, we like to work with a whole bunch of different types, but we're particularly fond of the ones that we get to work with from Island Creek. Um, they're consistent, they're clean, they're delicious. Um, they're always really plump. I mean, just look at these oysters that we've already shucked. They're big and meaty. Um, they're phenomenal raw, they're phenomenal cooked, and I uh, yeah, just want to thank everybody down in Island Creek for all their hard work. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to make um, a velouté, or basically a, a light cream-based soup. And it's a velouté of oysters, go figure, and uh, lovage. Lovage is a kind of a cool green, it's um, not related to, but tastes an awful lot like celery. And it's a little bit more mineral and a little bit more strong than uh, normal celery. Um, especially when celery gets cooked out, I feel like it can get soft and the flavor itself begins to diminish, whereas lovage stays there. And I love the combination of celery flavors and oysters. It's pretty classic, and the cream, just a little bit of that richness to round it out. And again, for someone at home, this is really, really, really easy. And I'm going to show you a couple of just quick tricks and some ingredients, and I'll also talk a little bit about some substitutions in case you don't have access to all this stuff, because certainly you don't need lovage, although it's, it's wonderful if you do. You're going to shuck all your oysters. I would take them out and put them in broth, and then you're going to have the, the natural oyster liquor left in your bowl. And I would take a small strainer and strain that out. So you're basically rinsing the oyster of any debris or any sand that's left, and then you're going to strain that out because you definitely want all of this phenomenal oyster liquor, um, which is, to me, almost as valuable as the oyster itself in terms of flavor and what it's going to bring to the soup itself. You know, any time that you've got older oysters, the reason why they're not as good is they're not as plump and juicy, and what they've lost is all of their liquor. And that's, that's where all the flavor is. Um, the texture is in the oyster itself. The flavor is in the liquor. OK, so what we're going to do first, now that we're at the stove, is we're going to take a little bit of butter and just let it begin to melt a little bit. Nothing crazy here. And don't be intimidated by the fancy dancy range right here. This is still something that you can really do at home. I would just keep it at a, uh, at a low flame. You don't want flames coming up over the pot, regardless of the size pot that you're going to use. Because um, again, that'll help color. And what we're trying to avoid here is the caramel flavors. We're trying to keep it very, very straightforward. So just until it begins to get a little frothy, we're going to add our shallots. We're going to add our leeks. And we're going to add our celery root. It's really important that you season well. Even if you're not a big salt person, um, which I completely understand, I don't want to have any salty food myself. Um, salt brings out flavors, and salt is especially important to the uh, act of sweating, because it's drawing out moisture. And that's what we're trying to do here, is help these vegetables release their flavors. And you want to always um, add your salt in when you're sweating from the get-go. First of all, it's going to help develop flavor. If I only added it at the end, it's going to taste very salty. That's just something that a lot of people do is they say, oh, I taste it, oh, I need salt. Well, that's important that you can adjust at the end, but what you really want to do is make sure that you've got a pretty good foundation for salt in the beginning. It's going to really, you're going to notice the difference. If you put two soups side by side, taste the one that was only seasoned at the end and one that was seasoned every step of the way. The one that's been seasoned every step of the way is going to taste a lot more complex and a lot rounder in flavor, which is really what we're after. So we're going to let this sweat just for a little bit. Um, and I use, in this instance, white peppercorns. Um, I'm actually not a big fan of white pepper in general, the French are, but in this particular case, the clean and the sharpness that you get out of white pepper is something that I prefer. If you don't have white peppercorns, you only have black, don't freak out, it's going to be totally fine. Pepper oysters, classic. If any of you have ever heard of mignonette that you have in your oysters, what mignonette actually is, is crushed peppercorns, and it's a vinaigrette made out of crushed peppercorns and shallots. So really, really simple. Um, but definitely make sure it's fresh, out of a mill, don't use anything that's already been uh, already been ground. In fact, I prefer not grinding at all because it makes the pepper taste different. So you're going to sweat these vegetables out a little bit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add our lovage and our parsley that's just been just slightly sliced through. And we're going to help sweat this out. Again, releasing flavors. So over the course of about 10 minutes, we've let this thing sweat. And now we're down to our vegetables that have um, the lovage and the parsley in there. And now that it's fully sweat, now we're going to deglaze. Um, this is vermouth. I like vermouth. It's a very aromatic, wine-based um, liquor. You could use straight up white wine if that's all you had. 
I wouldn't use anything heavier than that. Again, I'm trying to keep things very clean, but I'm trying to add a little bit of acidity. Um, it is actually really important that you taste this because it's so aromatic. If you opened it and you had a bottle of vermouth in your fridge for a month, you wouldn't want to use it. You're not going to be adding anything that's really tasty. I would try to use something that was only fresh. If you didn't have any wine at all, a little bit of lemon juice would help. But again, we're talking about foundation building here, and this is going to add a lot of flavor. It does taste pretty good, by the way. So just a little bit of vermouth. This is called deglazing, um, making sure that we get everything that's in that pot in this liquid, pretty straight up. So this is the foundation for what the velvet is going to be. I'm just going to cook this alcohol out a little bit. If you only add alcohol and you went right to the blender, you're going to taste the raw alcohol flavor. You're still going to have the flavor of the vermouth itself if we cook it for just a little while, but we're cooking out the alcohol, which is an another important step. We want the, the aromatics, but not the alcohol flavor. Okay, so now we're going to add a little bit of cream, but not a whole lot. And cream is not a bad thing. Use in moderation. It's actually quite delicious. And again, I like to use a little bit of creme fraiche. If you don't have any creme fraiche, not the end of the world. I just like the brightness, and I would go about, about one to one. Um, if you wanted to keep it lighter, you could add some water and some milk. You can always add more, a little bit of butter, something like that. Again, the, the dairy that you use is really up to you. I'm just sort of showing you what I would do. We're gonna taste. You should always taste. The salt's really good. I think it needs a little bit more pepper. I'm actually gonna add a little bit of pimenta split. Pimenta split is a, a red chili flake from a split. It has to be called a split if it's from a split. Um, and it's just a really kind of uh, a nice chili with some heat but not tremendous, um, but really nice citrus tones. And I love citrus and oysters. So just add a little bit, a little bit of zing to it. Once this comes up and we've got the flavor of the vegetables in there and we like everything that's going on, what we're then gonna do is we're gonna add our oysters. And this is an important step. We're gonna add our oysters and we're gonna cook them until they're just plump. Nothing much more beyond that. If they're raw, if you're not gonna get as much uh, flavor and the texture will be a little different. And if they're overcooked, the texture is gonna be different. So we're literally just trying to gently poach them. We're gonna go right to the blender. We're gonna blend it up and then we're gonna eat it. And it's really that simple. So that'll be our next step. I'm gonna add these right now and then we're gonna go to the blender. So we're going to go to the blender real fast, tear it up. I have a distinct feeling it's going to need a little bit of butter. I could use it, but it's really tasty. And I'm tasting it now also because it's kind of like a good chance to just make sure I've got the pepper in there that I want, I've got the salt in there that I want, the wine is where I want it to be, and it's all there. Butter is melted. This is really good. If you had potatoes, you could do that too. It would be almost more like a vichyssoise, but that would be really yummy. If you had turnips when you're getting closer to the end of summer and fall, you could add some turnip in there. It would be phenomenal. Um, all sorts of different ways you could approach this. And again, if you didn't have lovage, um, thyme, marjoram, uh, sorrel, any of these other wonderful things that are growing right now, locally, super tasty, all going to be uh, really just nice options for a really simple process of making a yummy oyster soup. Just gonna pass this. Can't wait. Island Creek, I hope I made you proud. Get it all out there, really push on this. If you didn't have a strainer, um, again, it's just it's just a textural thing. We get to be all you know foofy in the restaurant but nothing wrong with a rustic soup at home that didn't go through a strainer. And there you have it. That's awesome.